Hello there, I'm Steve from Mac84 and welcome to another video. Today we're going to be talking about how to get VGA video out from one of these machines into an inexpensive HDMI capture box. Now, this isn't anything new. You can go ahead and buy expensive solutions that allow you to import VGA or DVI video into a USB adapter. However, these generally run upwards of 300 US dollars. Today, we're going to be talking about a solution, although a bit convoluted, that can be done for under 75 US dollars. Over the years, a lot of people have asked me how to convert a VGA video signal to an HDMI signal for capturing and recording. Steve, I need your help. How do I get this onto this? Can you help me? Unfortunately, it's not that simple. The problem is that VGA is an analog signal and HDMI is a digital signal, so a conversion has to be done. However, the other problem is the resolution and refresh rate of that analog video signal. The analog video signal coming from your vintage computer is not something that most capture boxes can understand. They're designed to work primarily with TV resolutions like 720p, 1080i, and 1080p, etc. But you may be thinking, wait a second, I've seen some cheap VGA to HDMI adapters. Why can't I just use one of those? And that's a good question. Now, VGA is an analog signal and HDMI is a digital signal. So to get an analog signal to display on a digital capture device or a TV or a projector, you have to do some conversion. Now, the problem is a lot of these adapters will take that analog 640x480 resolution or 800x600 resolution signal from your old computer and just convert it to a digital signal via HDMI with the same resolution and video properties. The issue is that a lot of TVs and capture boxes will not understand those video resolutions or those refresh rates and they simply won't work. These cheap VGA to HDMI adapters are primarily good for projectors, which can usually support PC resolutions as well as standard TV resolutions. Your off-the-shelf cheapo USB to HDMI capture devices are usually only designed to capture video resolutions from a video game system or a DVD player or a TV device. So that's usually 720p or 1080p, 1080i, maybe 480p if you're lucky, etc. Sometimes you get lucky and these may be able to record 640x480, but that's not something you should expect and they may not support all the refresh rates that your computer is outputting. So what are we to do if we don't want to spend $300 on an integrated solution? Well, I'll tell you. So this solution involves three steps. You have a video splitter for your VGA signal, you have a video scaler, and then you have an HDMI capture box. So let's go over each step by step. One of the first things you'll likely need is a VGA splitter. Now, technically this is optional, but you'll likely want to have it for the reasons I'll explain. A VGA splitter or duplicator is a box like this. It has three jacks on it. This has two output jacks and one input jack. So essentially, you could plug one of these into your computer and it will split the video signal for let's say two monitors or a monitor and a projector, etc. What we'll be doing is splitting the video signal and having one of these plug into the computer monitor that we might want to use and the other one plug into our video scaler. That video scaler will then be connected to our USB capture device. Now there are a ton of VGA splitters and duplicators out there, so you want to make sure you're going to get one that is compatible with what you want to do and compatible with your system. I would recommend a powered one as they're better at reproducing crisp images. And then you also want to consider the cable length. This one will support cables upwards of 150 feet. However, some VGA splitters, maybe non-powered ones or some older ones, may not give you the best video signal with longer cables. So you want to do your research and make sure that you're getting a splitter that works for you. A standard two-way splitter like this usually costs about 20 US dollars. The next piece and arguably most important piece that does all the video processing magic here is this video scaler. Now mine is a bit of a professional unit, so it's a bit wider and it's probably a bit more expensive. However, I got this at a good price and it was something that I ended up using. This is an AT-Line Pro 4 scaler by the company Atlona. You don't have to get that specific one. This is probably overkill for most people's uses, but I'll give you a tour of what this device does so you get an understanding of how it works. So basically we have a bunch of inputs and outputs on this device. We'll start on this side. We have a power input jack. We have some composite and component video inputs. We also have some VGA inputs and we have some HDMI inputs, but we also have an HDMI out port. So primarily what I use this for is plugging in a video signal from a VGA port and exporting it via the HDMI port. 
Now this does not have any other VGA or video output other than the HDMI port. So now you know why it's so important that you use a video splitter or a duplicator for the VGA signal so you can see that live on your monitor. A scaler like this may introduce some lag depending on the model, so it's good that you have a video output that is directly from the computer, even though it goes through a splitter, to give you a good signal so you can see something while you're recording or streaming it. A video scaler like this will process the video and work some magic. It'll take that 640x480 or 800x600 resolution PC video signal from the VGA port and will convert it to a nice, crisp, and clean 720p or 1080p signal. So no matter what the input resolution is from your analog device, this scaler's job is to output it at something that a TV or a video capture device will be happy to accept. A lot of the low-end VGA to HDMI adapters will simply take an analog VGA signal and convert it to a digital HDMI signal. With that, you may run into things like resolutions not being accepted on your capture device or your TV, or you may have aspect ratio inaccuracies. The image may be stretched or scaled in a weird way that you don't want. Most video scalers will take that VGA signal, will keep that aspect ratio intact, and give you a nice, clean HDMI output that you could use with a capture device. A lot of these scalers also have a lot of options in the menu. So you can adjust the video output resolution, you can adjust the phase, the horizontal size, the vertical size, and a lot of options that those cheap adapters don't give you. Again, even if you're getting a low-end scaler, some of those options are built in. You just want to refer to the manual to ensure that your device is capable of doing what you want. Even a simple adapter like this one for $20 is a very good value. It will take a VGA input, it will even support audio, and it's powered by USB. So as you can see, you don't need to break the bank to convert a VGA signal to an HDMI signal. Now let's talk about capturing that HDMI signal. Now this is the video capture device that I use. It's nothing fancy, it's just a cheap 35 US dollar USB 3 HDMI capture box. It doesn't have all the bells and whistles as some of the other ones, but in my case it works pretty well. Basically what we use this for is capturing the HDMI video signal from the scaler. This particular HDMI capture box also has a HDMI out port that will preview the signal that you're capturing to an external TV. This device also has a microphone input that could be useful if you're trying to speak over something or you want to input audio into this device. Now you may need other amplification if you're plugging a line level thing into that microphone port, but you have to keep in mind that VGA is a video signal. It does not carry audio. So if you want to capture the audio from your PC or your other device, you will have to figure that out because some scalers do not support audio. Thankfully, capturing external audio is much easier, and there are a lot of solutions and splitters out there if you need them. So to summarize, we'll have a machine like this output a VGA signal into this splitter. One cable will go from here to here into the VGA input. This VGA splitter has two outputs. One of those outputs will go to this video scaler. Another one could plug into a monitor that we have set up. This video scaler will take the VGA input and use the HDMI output to connect to this HDMI capture device. This capture device will be connected via USB to our computer, and we could also use the HDMI out port to connect to another TV or a monitor to see the live feed from this capture device. Once you have all the hardware and wires plugged in, all you have to worry about is the software. A lot of these USB capture devices are compatible with Macs and PCs and software like OBS or QuickTime Player but you will need to do your research to make sure that they are compatible with your system. And some devices made by other companies may only work with proprietary software. Some video scalers will have advanced menu systems to adjust the phase or the output and horizontal and vertical positioning of the VGA signal and how it's converted to HDMI. Some of them will do all of that automatically, but one like this does have a few menu options that may come in handy. So again, while you're looking at video scalers, do your research. You may be able to look up the manual for the device by looking at the model number and doing a search online. That will give you an understanding of the resolutions it supports and the features that this product has. Now there's one thing we did forget to mention, cables. Now you'll likely need quite a few cables for this setup, and thankfully I have no shortage of them here. However, that may cut into the costs, so about $75 give or take depending on what you already have. You will need a VGA cable going from the computer to the VGA splitter, and then another cable going from here to the scaler, and then if you're plugging in a monitor to this, that's another cable, and then from the scaler to the HDMI capture box, you'll need the HDMI cable, 
These adapters usually come with their own USB cable to plug into your computer and may sometimes include a HDMI cable, which is handy if you're plugging this into a television to monitor the capture live. But that being said, you may need a few cables, hopefully you have them lying around. And if you're using existing cables, make sure yours don't have any nibbles on them. I assume this is your handiwork. Now, if you have a more modern computer like this Power Mac G4, and it has a DVI video out port instead of a VGA port, you may be thinking, great, I could just use a DVI to HDMI cable and I'm all set. Well, it really depends on the video card and the software of that computer. Most computers of the era may not understand a 1920 by 1080 video signal that would be accepted by one of these devices. And also you're running into the issue of the video refresh rate of the monitor signal. So a computer like this might be able to export that signal at 85 Hertz or something like that. And a device like this or a television may not understand that, even if you're converting DVI to HDMI. Thankfully, most older devices that have a DVI port are actually backwards compatible with analog video. So depending on the DVI port, you may be able to use a DVI to VGA adapter like this and plug it into a splitter like this VGA splitter and therefore this video scaler. That's not to say that all computers with DVI ports won't plug into an HDMI capture device or an HDMI TV. I'm just saying your mileage may vary and it really depends on the device and the video card that you're working with. Now, is this solution more elegant and compact than some of those expensive units? Well, no. However, I would argue it's more capable and expandable. I would recommend this solution for anybody who is an enthusiast in video games or computers. You likely have the knowledge to set up something like this, and it's probably not going to be a stretch. However, this is not really an elegant solution. It's not an all-in-one system. There's no software out of the box that will, you know, configure everything perfectly for you. So you do have to do your research, look at some manuals, and learn how to use software like OBS or QuickTime Player. However, I think it's totally capable to do this on a budget and not worry about those $300 adapters that may lock you in. Because the thing is, with a setup like this, you could always individually replace one of these components. If you want to upgrade this device, or your splitter, or your scaler, you could do so at an inexpensive cost. You don't have to worry about buying a brand new $300 or $400 device. So for under $75, you can get the capability to do video capture from older devices like these computers without the heavy price point. So that's how you could capture video signals from these computers into a standard USB HDMI capture device, even if you need a few adapters and cables to make it happen. Conversion technology. Again, you want to do your research and make sure that these devices will be compatible with the signals that are coming out of your computers. Everything is a little bit different and some vintage things are just quirky. I hope this video has shown you an alternative method using relatively inexpensive parts to get a great VGA capture solution set up with your computer. If you like these sorts of videos, please consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel. If you like this handsome t-shirt I'm wearing, go to mac84.net, the link is in the video description, to check it out. You could also follow me on Twitter and Instagram, my handle is mac84tv. And if you want to support me on Patreon, you could do so at patreon.com forward slash mac84. For less than a dollar a month, you get exclusive behind the scenes access to videos I'm working on and a lot of draft previews before anything is published. So be sure to check that out. That's about it for now. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you right here next time on Mac 84. No, you were perfect. I think they really liked you. Mm -hmm.